understand that. Right. They're like, oh, well, I, I live in an apartment. They're like, you can grow herbs on your windows so that could just yeah. change everything wow. about you. I mean... I live now, I went from acreage and an 1,800 square foot house to a probably 600 square foot trailer <laughs> with a, about 2 foot a yard all the way around, and I'm loaded with plants. There you go. I've built up. Everything is up. I took pallets, and we've built basically walls wherever I could build them where there wasn't windows outside and I've grown my herbs on one and my food on the other um, for example thyme I cook with it but it's also good for fibromyalgia uh, basil wow. is good you know there's different different things that you can cook with and you can use them for your medical so find out your problems and start researching absolutely and if, if you have any questions get a hold of uh the guys at B.O.B. here, and yeah. I'll, if they want, I can try to answer some of them. But this apothecary is really good to have on hand. That's actually why I put it in the book form. I wasn't going to sell it. I, I was going to put it on the app. But then I thought, well, then you have to keep charging the thing. And I couldn't afford to make an app. I couldn't afford to. Yeah. They wanted like $6,000. Oh, my God. And oh, so wow. It was it, the book cost me two ninety nine to make it, and I'm selling it for four dollars. So it's like, well, big whoop! I might well, I'd rather have paper anyway. <laughs> well, I, I, guess, uh, I think that's I it. tell people, no matter how you do it, whether it's online, whatever you need to do, that 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 is what our group is about here. Planet Bob. It's not about being the super duper prepper of all right. time having every gadget known to man it's just about being prepared for the everyday right you know it's, it's just there, there, there are so many things out there and I'm not saying you can be prepared for everything because nobody can but the biggest things are like losing you know the everyday losing your job weather disasters mm -hmm. I mean those are the things I mean I, I get it it's a lot more fun to, to prep for you know super volcanoes and you know, random planets hitting the Earth and, you know, nuclear war that's, you know, been going to be happening since, you know, 1940, whatever, since we dropped the bomb on Hir Hiroshima, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, uh -huh. the, it's the everyday that gets people, right. you know? Yeah, yeah. That's what people need to be prepping for. Okay, give me the name of your right. book again so I can post it on here. Uh, Preppers. Okay, the uh, Preppers Herbal... Apothecary, and then it says Beginner by okay. Julie Kinney. Okay. And the other one is the Chaos Coordinator. Well, if you go on Amazon and punch up Julie Kinney, it should pop me in there somewhere. Yeah, and I'll be running the contest here pretty soon. I'm playing a VOB, so people can yeah. buy for their free copies, autographed copies, by the way, because I think these, these books are going to be bigger than what you think, because... Chaos coordinator. I made a whopping list. Well, the chaos coordinator is hilarious. I mean, I, I'm getting it for sure. I mean, it's it's there's parts of it that that's really sad. Like I said, that was the watch, watching what happened to her in Washington was seriously like just like somebody just giving Superman a kryptonite roofie. It was like, oh my god! <laughs> I don't think that did that just happen. <laughs> Well, it took me a while. After that, you know, I, it took me two weeks to drive down to Florida, and there was its own, that's its own story <laughs> of exploding vehicles and all oh, getting God. lost and <laughs> diarrhea. Oh, dear <laughs> three days. But okay. it, it, we managed, and you know what? What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So now I can now I can bench press a Buick. <laughs> yeah, way to go, Wonder Woman. Yeah, wow. There you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my Lord. But it is what it is. And women have it rough sometimes. Oh, we yeah. all do. I mean, there's women who have way worse than me. And they manage, and I'm in awe of the way that they handle them. Um, so we're in good company. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's you're, one of you're, the biggest thing I've noticed with women preppers. It seemed like at the beginning, women preppers were almost like 
female lions. It was like they were protecting with theirs. It was like they were, you know, attacking each other. We were all like, you know, on each other. I mean, I'm talking about on like the Facebook groups. It was like, well, you're stupid if that's what you think. You know what I mean? Stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. I've noticed mm-hmm. a change probably in the last year or so where women have really kind of united in the understanding that this is a, you know, it's, it's a sisterhood. We should not be doing this. And I know that that, that sounds very, you know, feminist or whatever you want to call it, which I am not. Um, but I, I just, I, I, have, I have noticed that and I've noticed the respect level has changed too in these groups because when I first started in these survival groups, I'm serious, there were guys like, well, yeah, when, you know, when you're in the garden and, you know, making clothes, we could be doing this. It's like, excuse me, son, I will shoot you right out that way. But, like, I think that, that's all we had. We were, we, we were all wrapped up in what, like I said, what I call the RPG, the role-playing game. Right. Um, we were all, we were all stuck in this, you know, apocalyptic world of there's not going to be technology and we're all going to go back to living like Quakers. And we, a lot of us were really wrapped up in this and, talking about raiders and camps and it's like the reality is if something ever does happen to the world and i'm not saying it won't but it can but the reality is the electricians the plumbers the scientists the inventors not every one of them is going to die we will eventually again have phones we will eventually have light we will have running water we will have sewage systems we're not going to go back to living like we did in the 1500s right right I, you and know, if we did, it's not going to be for long. You know what's a good, really good example of that um, is uh, Stephen and Owen King's book, uh, Sleeping Beauties. Did you read that? No, I have not. Okay, in it, okay, uh, 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 short, you know, short version. Uh, women go to sleep and they go to what they call this other place, and they have to um, do things. That, it's only women. No men. Um, it's only wow. women, okay? So there's like a doctor. There was a warden for the uh, penitentiary. There, of course, inmates. There were, but there were other people. The one woman, she's older, but her husband was a plumber, and she picked up on things. So she got running water going. It was really good that they had these separate, <laughs> different groups of women doing these things, you know, getting the shelters. Okay. And, that, and that, that's how it's going to be. You yeah. know what I mean? If there's ever an apocalyptic situation where, let's say, like, something does happen, you know, let's say super yeah. volcanoes or, you know, pick, pick your disaster. Yeah. It's like not everybody that has knowledge of anything is going to die. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You're probably more than likely not going to have to bring buckets to a creek. You're not, you know what I'm saying? Right. Eventually, you will have the things back. <laughs> Excuse me. That you yeah. Had before maybe differently. You're not going to get on Facebook, maybe, or have the internet. Yeah. Yeah. No. But it was know. really um, since we were doing this, and um, I had read, I was like, "Wow, it, that's exactly what we're going to be talking about." Because that's exactly what they did. They used what they knew and did what they needed to do. Yeah, you know, that's me. It was great. It's called Sleeping Beauty. I need to read that. How did they not read that? I don't know. <laughs> Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> yes. Uh, such a good book. Um, yeah, I got one when I, uh, my daughter and I went to see him in September. So, uh, but yeah, it, it's called The Other Place, and it's all women there. The women that have fallen asleep, they go to this other place. And they're making, you know, one, they just gave, you know, one gave birth to a baby. And they had to, you know, it was breach, and somebody knew the knowledge how to do that. So, you know, everything turned out good. But, you know, it it just really... It was different for me reading it because of this, because of Planet B.O.B. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I read it differently than maybe somebody else would because I came to mind all this. Like, wow. Exactly. Well, well, my view has actually changed when, I believe it, you, you did, who did you do your show with, Julie? The, the podcast that you did? Don Appleberg. Don Appleberg, yes. Oh, okay. Um, oh, or CRN. Okay, well, she, you and Dawn actually changed my mind on, like, what I saw as far as, like, prepping, because I've been doing this for years, you know, 
And then, like I said, when you get caught up in that RPG, you're really like, you're in it. You're like, oh, I'm going to do this. And I'm going to secure my walls. And I'm going to A Rambo. <laughs> and it's like, they, they were actually the ones who kind of like, you know, lifted it up. Like, hello, reality. You know, it's like people should be helping each other in situations like this. So, you know, Julie used to talk about how she used to have little bags and things ready for yeah. her neighbor. How, how she had things like, you know, like if, if a disaster happened in her neighborhood, she had fresh ready for people who didn't have them. Wow. You know, and at first I thought, that, well, that's kind of naive because they're going to know you have stuff, they're going to kill you. But then if you really think about it, you know, it's like a, a dog or anything else. It's like if you give them food, you show them that you're not going to hurt them, that you're your friend. Generally, they're going to be your ally and they'll kill for you. Yeah, and he was there much different. Yeah, yeah. Right, and it was more, the stuff that I had were in gallon bags, and it was enough, it was like a 72-hour kit. It gave them enough for three days, and it had a Boy Scout book in it that showed them how to make fire, fish, and, you know, Boy Scout manual, if you can find one at a Goodwill, is one of the best tools you could have, because it tells you a little bit about everything, how to fight off vicious dogs. I mean, just stuff you don't think about. Um, but it was in a zip, it all fit into a gallon Ziploc baggie, and so people couldn't tell what you had based... Okay, yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah. So that was the premise of it. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, and, and a lot of things like you guys were doing, like you guys probably didn't think that, that you had that big of impact on people, but you actually really did. Like, for me, a lot of things that I did, I mean, like, after hearing what you did, I started making kits for homeless people in Amarillo, Texas. I used to, like, just hand them out, you know what I mean? It just wasn't much, because, you know, I was a bitch. But, like, I would, you know, just hand out a toothbrush, toothpaste, you know, a map to, like, area fish ponds, you know, how to make a fish, you know, different things like that, a fish hook, you know, just different things, how to build a Dakota fire pit, because, you know, fires were illegal there, but you get one in the ground where it can't be seen, you <laughs> know, different right. things like that, and I did that because of what you guys were doing, you guys inspired that. Oh, well, that was, that's kind of you, thank you. So, yeah, I mean, and, and like I said, the, the view just turned around. It's like, like I told people in our tornado thing, it's like, if you see your neighbor struggling and you still have your home, they'll be like, oh, well, sucks to be, you know, trying to, and I'm not saying to put yourself at risk, you know, yeah. you know, don't, don't go and put yourself at risk, you know, put your life at risk by taking, you know. You know, if you see, like, three guys that are, you know, standing there and they look sketch, you know, go with your gut instinct, you know, just yeah, stay yeah. away from them. Yeah, I don't. Hey, guys. Right. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's especially true for women. Yes, yes. People will yeah. take advantage of you. Well. But, I mean, no as humans, <laughs> you, you, you help, I, I, I believe, this is just my thought, but you help people. Because it's the right thing to do. If, you know, there's a lot of preppers out there that are the zombie preppers, and they're like, yeah. oh, we're not going to tell anybody, we're going to kill them all, we're going to shoot them all, we're going to live sure. in an isolated little thing. Uh -huh. Well, what the heck is the point of living? Yeah, exactly. Well, there's no quality of life for you if you're the only ones there, and, and your rule of law is take what you want and use what you want and there's nothing else left at, you know, scorched earth policy. What's the point? I mean, yeah. I'm a Christian. Well, and I'm not I was, and I was, you know, to see them try. Do you know what I mean? What I, what I call the, the armchair zombie preppers that are going to go out and kill everything. Like, I would love to see you with a, with a true survivalist prepper go to their house and try to take their stuff. I triple dog Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> well, that and, you know, living alone or living by yourself, 
or for long periods of time make you go crazy. <laughs> well, humans are meant to be basically herd animals. I'm sorry, but we are. We're yeah. herd animals. Women specifically need other women. We don't need other men. We need other women. Very and true. any man in the world will say women talk too much. Women repeat themselves. Women do this. That's how we interact with women. And 